In this video, we'll cover the process of creating data mappings for your model. The data model allows you to map or point a model property to a tag coming from your data source. These mappings are then used to populate the model properties with values. Let's get started by launching our data model designer and then connecting to our data model. I'm going to use the default credentials of administrator and no password, so I'll click the connect button and wait for it to load. Next, we'll switch to our data mappings tab since this is where we're going to be configuring all the aspects of our data mappings. Prior to being able to create a mapping profile or mappings, you'll need to connect to the data connector server, so I'll click the connect button at the top. Now I can start creating a mapping profile. A mapping profile is a file saved by the model designer that holds all of the information your mappings contain. Since this is the next step in the process, let's work on making that mapping profile now. To do this, I'm going to click on the Create New Mapping Profile button. Next, the model designer will ask me to give this a name, so I'm going to enter Default Profile as the name and click OK. Now we have a mapping profile we can work with. The first thing we'll need to do is select a data provider. This tells the data connector what type of data it should expect to be getting. You can choose from different OPC data types, an ODBC data type, or even a Status Machine Edition data type. For this demonstration, I'm going to use the simulation data type, so I'll select that from the list. Now we have options to set the display name and the default update rate for our data provider, but the current values for these are acceptable, so I'll leave them as is. On the left side, you have options to configure the status server. These settings are also acceptable, so I'm not going to change any of them. Now we're ready to start creating our data mappings. So let's click the Connect button under the Configurations section, and then we'll click the Configure Mappings button to open the dialog to create our mappings. This dialog is where you'll be configuring all of your mappings. On the left, you have a tree view displaying all of the assets available to you in your model. I'll expand this to show some of the assets we have. On the right, you have your data provider. This is where all of your data endpoints will be listed for you. Now, to create a mapping, you'll need to select an asset from your tree, then choose a property on it. So I'll select the generator on this turbine, then I'll select voltage as the property and make sure my attribute is selected as value. Next, I'll come over to my simulation data, and I'll find random 300 as a property. Once satisfied with your choice, click the Add Mapping button to create the mapping and see it added to your mappings list. As a side note, you'll see there's two additional buttons titled Import and Export Mappings. Status Enterprise can export all of your data mappings to a CSV file and can also import mappings from a CSV file you've created. Now, let's take a look at our data mapping. Each mapping has five editable properties on the mapping. They are Mapping Mode, Server Update Rate, Server Monitoring Rate, Data Provider Update Rate, and Data Provider Monitoring Mode. The Mapping Mode allows you to define how the data flow works in your mapping. It can be set to None, To Provider, To Server, and Two Way. Setting the mapping mode to None disables the mapping so that it will not update. To Server means that the data is flowing to the server from the data provider, while To Provider behaves the opposite, with the data flowing towards the provider from the model. Two Way behaves exactly as you'd expect. Data can be sent either from the provider to the model, or from the model to the data provider. The update rates for both the server and data provider control how often new values should be sent or requested for the data mapping. The monitoring modes control how updates to values are handled. The options for these properties are Disabled, Reporting, and Sampling. In the case of reporting, the value will be updated each time it changes and only when it changes, while sampling will update the value every so often even if the value hasn't changed. 
For your convenience, you'll also have both the server item and data provider browse paths to show you where your mapping leads to. Now let's add a couple more data mappings so we can see our data updating in the runtime. To do this, I'm going to collapse the TB1001 asset, then expand TB1002. Next, I'll select generator and voltage. Make sure I have value selected as my attribute, and then I'll bind it to the same data simulation item we used earlier. Next, I'll collapse 1002 and open TB1003. I'll find generator, then select voltage. Make sure I have value as my attribute, and then I'll click the add mapping button to add that one. Next, I'll close the window, and now we'll need to save this profile. So I'll click the save button now, and then we're going to open our mimic runtime. I'll log in using my default credentials by clicking connect. It'll ask me if I want to open the last mimic I viewed. I'm going to go ahead and click yes to open that and wait for this to load. Now you'll see that each turbine informational panel has data updating where the generator volts are displayed due to our data mappings we created. In closing, Status Enterprise is a powerful, easy to use tool that lets you design once and deploy multiple times. For more information about Status Enterprise and data mapping, please visit us on the web at www.scada.com.